There's a phenomenon sweeping the nation called the trans movement, based upon the idea that a person's gender is fluid. What's the result? Well, a spike in gender-confused kids. I know that inside I'm not a boy, I'm a girl, and it's what makes me happy. It's not okay for somebody to just say that I can't live the way I want to and I can't be myself. I, I'm not going to be erased. They can't literally erase me unless they're going to commit genocide. I am Desmond. I'm 11 years old, and I like pizza, trains, and drinking root beers, and it's caffeine-free. I also do drag, and I love to put on makeup, dresses, and wigs, and of course, jewelry if necessary. My full drag name is Desmond is Amazing. I feel very happy to have a mom that accepts me. It really touches me deeply that there are other children out there that he's reaching and they're listening to him and he's influencing them to be themselves. I'm very proud of him. I'm proud that he's found his path so early. My greatest joy in this is just seeing Desmond happy. I love doing drag because it makes me feel amazing and self-expressive. It just feels amazing to know that people love what I do. My one big message would be three words, be yourself always. Who would do such a thing, and why? Brandon Showalter of the Christian Post describes what this is and who's behind this agenda. Men who like to get a thrill off of presenting as a woman, dressing in women's clothing, pull back the proverbial curtain, and that's who's driving this. And once you understand all of that, um, and you realize that you've just been gaslit through so many sources, again, especially the media, driven by these perverted men, everything starts to make sense. Predator Watch finds a brief overview of important stories in the news or issues of concern as they relate to understanding the nature of sexual predators, their characteristics, how their minds operate, their methods of manipulation, and what motivates them. They hide in plain sight, can smell an opportunity a mile away, and count on people not understanding just how dark their hearts are and how intent they are about always producing victims. Stay tuned as John Euler, a licensed professional counselor with over 25 years of professional experience treating both survivors and sexual predators, shares his insights on this edition of Predator Watch. Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm John Euler. It's a pleasure to introduce to you Brandon Showalter of the Christian Post. He and I met uh, when he was good enough to interview me, so I figured the least I could do is get him on because, uh, Brennan, you're a wealth of, of knowledge. Let me introduce you. Uh, since the summer of 2016, Brennan Showalter has been a journalist with the Christian Post. He was first inspired to break into a career in writing and journalism while mopping floors and scrubbing toilets as a church custodian in 2015 and <laughs> April 2015, a man after my own heart. In 2007, he earned a bachelor's from Bridgewater College of Virginia, is a fellow of the John Jay Institute for Faith, Society, and Law, and graduated from a three-year program at Bethel School of Ministry in Redding, California, which, uh, coming from the Sacramento area, I'm familiar with Redding. And he also hosts his own podcast for the uh, Christian Post podcast and does an excellent job. Brandon, welcome. Thank you, John. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Well, I'm excited to have you on because you are a wealth of knowledge dealing with a topic that uh, is near and dear to both our hearts, unfortunately. Um, something we're both very concerned with, which is the trans movement, um, it's really a ruse, quite frankly. Uh, a lot of 
vulnerable kids, vulnerable families being impacted by this. And you've covered uh, this in a number of different ways. And so uh, right now you are in a very unique position to speak to us because you have seen things historically um, not only play out, but you've seen kind of where things have come from and where they might be going. So wanted to have you on to uh, get your take uh, right now on how did you get involved in this and where do you see things going and what are some of your primary concerns? Well, I could, uh, <laughs> I would take a long time to explain, but uh, I first came into covering this sort of by accident. Uh, was, uh, as you mentioned there, I, in the summer of 2016, I uh, started with CP, and it was sort of in the wake of the Pulse nightclub shooting, which happened in June of that year. Uh, and as I, you know, realized that a lot of the LGBT activism was happening it was less focused on, you know, same-sex marriage and that kind of thing because it had been legal for approximately a year at that point. Uh, the whole transgender movement was afoot, and I had seen the Time magazine cover about I think it was with Laverne Cox this act this male actor who presents as a woman and he's on from Orange is the New Black and I saw uh, him on Time magazine and I was just I didn't really know too much about it uh, but as I began to realize that that was becoming the main focus of uh, LGBT activism and how that was quickly changing policies around the country in states and cities. Um, and this, this concept of gender identity kept cropping up um, as this additional category in civil rights legislation. Uh, and, you know, documents such as birth certificates, driver's licenses, and, uh, you know, other kinds of legal, uh, you know, documents, uh, things were changing very quickly. Uh, and you wouldn't have even noticed it because oftentimes, uh, particularly in liberal cities and states, they were doing things very quietly. Committees and sort of government entities were quietly revising, you know, laws, policies, and regulations, just sort of inserting this slippery language into all kinds of things. And so, you know, companies were doing this, you know, the YMCA, it, businesses were you know, announcing their support for this. And I just realized how so much of this wasn't being covered uh, at all. But also what really sort of tipped me <laughs> towards, you know, diving more deeply into this was the realization that unlike previous movements uh, within LGBT activism, uh, you know, the campaign for same sex marriage, for example, there was not near the medicalization of, of this. I, I realized that drugs were being given to children to halt their puberty, hormones administered to uh, pursue the physically impossible goal of changing their sex and then surgical interventions uh, later in life. Uh, and then I, it just sort of went on from there. Uh, so I've, it's just been kind of a crash course. I've it sort of jumped in with both feet and tried to keep treading water. And I, I continue to be very disturbed and alarmed by what I'm finding out. Uh, you asked about where I see this is all going. Uh, I, whew, I'll, there's a lot I could say about that, but I'll just say on, on a broad, broad scale here that the goal is, and this sounds conspiratorial, but it really is true, that this is a transhumanist agenda. This is about dissociating people from their biology. This is about creating a bunch of split selves. People are become so detached from their, their being that they'll literally be controlled by anything. This is a massive power grab like we have never before seen. And so I, I again, want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to this because there are so many dimensions that I think that the average person in the public just isn't aware of because, and I can't emphasize this enough, purportedly mainstream media outlets are completely kowtowing to this. And in fact, not just kowtowing, but aggressively pushing it, presenting it as though this is a wonderful, nice thing to be celebrated when it's quite the opposite. As a matter of fact, I'm very familiar with, you're probably very familiar with as well, um, kids that are being um, 
brought into the trans movement under the guise of drag queen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, The little child, I think he's age 12 or 13 now, but Amazing Desmond. Right. I am I am blocked from Amazing Des- Desmond's uh, Twitter page, which is interesting for a 12 year old or a 14 year old now to know enough to block me. Uh, obviously, well, he probably has handlers. He probably has people helping him with that. But who knows? Which should concern all of us. So that is uh, some of what brought a lot of this to my attention. You have young kids that are being featured in gay pride parades, Mm -hmm. on TV shows, on RuPaul Drag Queen, I guess Drag uh, Kids, is it? I think it's called RuPaul's Drag Race. But these young kids, uh, where it used to be just adults, suddenly we're seeing uh, kids being um, ushered into that world. And uh, I'm calling that the farm team for the trans movement that there seems to be uh, a convergence of the drag ki- drag queen world and then trans. Um, and that's very, very concerning for me with my background dealing with sexual predators. Uh, what, what have you seen, if anything, what dots are you connecting, Brandon? It all does sort of converge on uh, itself. Um, there, there are some nuances that are, are here too. Uh, the, the entire project of sort of the drag queen story hour and the phenomenon of drag queens being around children. I do believe that it's an intentional sort of confusing message to send to children to make them question the most basic facts of their being. If you watch any mainstream news coverage about this, that subject, uh, it's about these drag queens who want to give back to the community. It's presented as though it's this noble thing and it's just kind of entertainment. It's fine. Uh, meanwhile, there have been cases of actual predators with criminal histories, prostitution and child molestation in several instances where these have been happening. And it's not been because the library system did any screening or background checks. It's because local activists and community people uh, were doggedly determined to expose this and they didn't have, you know, their, their instincts just said, no, wait a minute, this is wrong. The common thread uh, is it's deliberately confusing people, young kids, about their bodies, about, I hate to say the word gender because, you know, gender has been expressed throughout history in a variety of different ways, but it's about confusing their sex. Sex is the target. And that's that's one of the key things that I want to really drive home because um, it's one of the most basic things about us. Our bodies are our bodies are sexed. We have reproductive organs. It's we should just be able to look at them and know what they mean. It you know, the body says something. Um, but when you send these really kind of confusing messages, it doesn't mean you know. I think in certain parts of the country, gender norms are more rigidly enforced. But you know, if you're a boy that likes the arts and music, it doesn't make you a girl. <laughs> we shouldn't have to say that. If you're a girl that's a tomboy and likes sports and to get underneath the hood of a car and fix the motor, you know, great. She's still a girl. Um, but these, you know, drag queens are, you know, dressed up in these garish costumes and, you know, sending really awful, you know, stereotype filled messages about what a woman is to young children. It's just confusion, confusion, confusion. And so people start to, uh, these kids just start to internalize all sorts of things. And I was just reporting on an incident recently in a library system. I think it was out in Washington State where the drag queens were performing in a library in front of young children and they were giving out their Instagram handles and the content on these Instagram accounts was full-on pornographic. This was horrible, horrible stuff. Highly sexualized. Um, And so yes, transgenderism as an ideology is communicated in part through uh, these drag performers um, because it's all about causing children to call the most basic facts of their being into question Uh, and then they're groomed into um, all sorts of other things Uh, and the propaganda is just coming at these children from so many different avenues educational curricula youtube and tumblr it's just non-stop it would be very hard to be a kid these days i just have to say you have um, done a number of podcasts uh, as far as being featured on them Uh, You also uh, do the Christian Post podcast, but you've done a number of uh, podcasts that I've listened to where you speak to the issue of 
the medical uh, issues that are being pushed on these kids, the transformations, uh, serious issues. Mm -hmm. That certainly is one uh, nefarious uh, part of all this. People that are making tremendous money, mm -hmm. uh, customers for life, quite frankly, off these kids. Right, playing right. on the fears of these parents and they've brainwashed these kids. There's no other way to put it. Mm -hmm. And then you have the other special interests, which happen to be uh, predators. They're all predators, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Anytime somebody uses another person, they're a predator. Right. It depends upon what they're after. But within the highly sexualized aspects of this whole trans movement, Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what's sad is they take a very legitimate issue that mm -hmm. is not seen very often as far as a gender-confused child that's been left alone in this sense, that somebody hasn't influenced them. Uh, right, most right. kids will make it through, uh, you know, up, up to puberty without any issues right. if, you, if they're not influenced in one way or another. But abuse, they're also mm -hmm. targeting um, autistic kids. Now it's called Spectrum. Right. Right. Uh, on the spectrum. Um, but you, you have mentioned, and I have also mentioned, how predators are masters at language, mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. uh, capturing language. Right. Speak to that uh, and help yes. parents yes. understand this. Right. Yes. Well, the, the podcast that you were just referring to was a recent episode I did with the Ruth Institute, um, which is the Catholic nonprofit organization based in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, and I, as I told the host of that show, and I'm going to just explain now, it's um, there are people that do stand to make a lot of money off of drugs and hormones. And you know, I, I hate to even call them medical treatments because these are done on healthy bodies. There's nothing wrong with these young kids in a physical sense. They may be mentally troubled, but oftentimes that's been sort of superimposed on him on them because of all of the the propaganda and indoctrination that's coming at them from so many different um, uh, avenues, as I was just saying. Uh, but before I get into explaining all of that, I will tackle your language question because that, I think, is the most important thing that parents need to know about this because the entire transgender movement uh, relies upon this nebulous notion called gender identity. Gender identity is a complete farce. It is based on the lie that human beings can change sex. And if you ask anybody for a definition of gender identity, the most anybody can give you is this completely circular definition that relies upon sex stereotypes and they'll vaguely say something about a quote-unquote internal sense of who they are as though it is actually possible to be the opposite sex. So it, that's what it rests upon, that big lie. And because it rests upon that big lie, you have to change all of the language. And so <laughs> once people get that, it's able to you're able to think clearly because what else can you think in but language? So this movement destabilizes language and thought along with it. Um, and so whenever everybody talks about, well, I just want to support trans people or I just want to, you know, advocate for their rights. You have to ask the question, what does that actually mean? What is really being communicated? Because you can say all these ni nice things about, you know, protections against discrimination and, you know, all, you know, you want them to be, you know, protected by law and you don't want them to be abused, which we all want. But what's really at, at the core of this here? And it's this redefinition of the human person um, where basic biology what we've all known is called into question. I mean, it wasn't until very, very recently that people would actually look at you with a straight face. The, people actually look at you with a straight face and they can't say that they really know what a male or a female is. And adding to this confusion is what trans activists often do, which is conflate those males and females who have intersex conditions like Klinefelter's or Turner syndrome and they conflate these genetic abnormalities with those who say they are the opposite sex. And they trot out these people that have medical conditions, oftentimes aren't realized until adolescence. And 
hold them out as an example of these poor people who just need all of these extra protections. When really what's going on, again, is this radical redefinition of the human person that has severe implications, especially for women and girls, because most of the people driving this are, in fact, predatory men, many of them autogynophiles, which are men with heterosexual men with with a fetish, men who like to get a thrill off of presenting as a woman, dressing in women's clothing, pull back the proverbial curtain, and that's who's driving this. And once you understand all of that, um, and you realize that you've just been gaslit through so many sources, again, especially the media, driven by these perverted men, everything starts to make sense. But uh, So that's why I make a big deal, for example, of not using transgender pronouns, as it said. The only time I, certainly as, as a Christian, would be willing to do that would be if I'm in a distinctly pastoral context where it's understood, if I've got someone who's really struggling with gender confusion or he or she is trying to desist from having been in that way of life, and it's understood that, okay, you're, we're here in maybe a church or a ministry context where you know, we want to give you space to recover because desisting is a very gnarly process. It can be, and I've interviewed detransitioners who have told me this, that you know, it, it sort of helps them along to have sort of the end goal is, okay, we want to be reintegrating you with your, your real body, what your body actually is. And in the process, I would be willing to maybe use a pronoun here and there, even if it's not correct, but only in that sort of understanding. Other than that, especially in law, if you concede the language, you've conceded the entire ball game, and so that's why I just say don't count out to any of it, because it takes away our ability to name the problem. And if you want to mask an injustice, if you want to mask an injustice, the first thing you do is rename it. I mean, imagine calling slaves assistant planters. I mean, really? I mean, it's it's like what they're doing now with prostitution. They call it sex work. No, it's sexual exploitation. And I'll just emphasize here, it's women and girls who will bear the brunt of this. Well said. Uh, I think uh, just like with any cult leader, any type of cultic system, uh, cults are simply filled with, in terms of their leadership, those that are masters of spin, those that are masters of right. language. And mm -hmm. uh, they, they have one objective. Well, actually, they've got a couple of object objectives. But the primary objective is, for any cult leader, is I want to cross your boundaries. Exactly. And that, that can take a number of forms, right? That can, I want your money. I want uh, your body. I want something of yours that I don't have a right to. But I know if I pull out a weapon, I'm going to go to prison. So I'm going to have to manipulate you and your mind to where you're actually happy to give that to me. Exactly. Exactly. And if you control the narrative, and if you control the language, you control the narrative. There you go. And uh, nobody knows that better than somebody who works with language. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon, you work with language. Mm -hmm. You have to be exact mm -hmm. as you're using language. And so you can see how these people are taking the language, they're inverting it, they're flipping it, and they're using it to manipulate both kids and parents. And let me just say, that is so true, especially in the realm of journalism, because I go absolutely crazy uh, when I see, for example, and I'm seeing more and more of these stories, crimes that have been committed by violent men. But the headlines and in the body of the article read, woman, I mean, committing, you know, rapes and, you know, violent burglary and theft. I mean, there was, I mean, a woman did not commit these crimes. So I, I, I imagine that our crime statistics are getting skewed too, because they're recorded by sex. And we know that men commit the overwhelming, like over 90% plus of, you know, violent and sexual crime. And so imagine now, if, if we're suddenly going to call in this bodily reality, we're going to call this into question, our, our crime statistics are going to be, you know, wildly off. And so this just has so many other spillover effects. Uh, and I, I just see the deception uh, to the point where I'll, I'll be reading an article, and I'm not sure the who's being referred to because the pronoun doesn't match who's real. I mean, it's just so confusing. I, I can't read mainstream articles anymore because I'm not 
sure, entirely sure who the subjects are talking, being talked about. So, um, yeah, I, <laughs> it, it is, it's crazy. I, I don't use the word, for example, I don't say transgender woman. I say trans identified male because it presumes that transgender is a material fact. It's not. It's not. A person may be indeed suffering with gender identity disorder or gender dysphoria, but I'm going to say that. I'm not going to present it as fact that a body is the opposite sex because that doesn't literally exist in material reality. It, it just it's it's a com it's completely contrived. You're you're still being much more kind than I am. I still use man or woman, <laughs> guy or gal. <laughs> Bottom line, maybe that's because I worked with uh, sex offenders. Well, but it's relevant when I say because if the issue I say trans identified, it's usually because I'm trying to indicate that this is how a person has identified himself, rather than describing it as a brute fact. Brennan, we have uh, parents that are listening to us that are uh, probably swimming in their mind right now and trying to figure out what, what is all this? Uh, because the average adult up until now has just been living his or her life trying to uh, do the right thing, pay the bills, raise their families right. or family. Uh, meanwhile, right. the kids are going to school and they're being indoctrinated. Uh, they turn on the TV and uh, you know, little do parents realize that this is being pumped in through the media in all sorts of different ways. There's always a generation gap. That's just a reality because the older we get, the more we have to be focused on doing the right thing. Um, but let's say a parent is listening and they're starting to connect some dots. They're starting to become aware of, as you're speaking, some things are going on at school. Uh, things are being taught. The kids are starting to use certain phrases, terms. What should a parent no. Uh, what should a parent become aware of? Uh, what should concern a parent? I hate to sound like a chicken little here, but that they're coming for your kids. Uh, and that your kids are being brainwashed in all likelihood. And it doesn't matter if you live in a, you know, a more conservative part of the country. This stuff has tentacles absolutely everywhere. Yes, it's arguably much worse in more liberal areas of the nation, you know, cities and you know, blue states, if you will. But this is everywhere. There are uh, the this movement, this gender identity movement, is hell bent on challenging kids' you know, basic reality testing abilities. They are starting them very, very young. We're talking preschool and kindergarten. You know, messages that there are over 100 genders, for example, in the UK. I just reported on a story where a BBC resource, a film series aimed at young kids, is teaching them that there are over 100 genders, as it just said. It's <laughs> utter absurdity. Uh, it, it's just so ridiculous. Now, y people can think that, oh, well, that's, you know, that's just, kids aren't going to believe that. No, kids, you violate the trust of a child. The kids believe that they're Superman. They you jump off, you know, staircases trying to fly because... They think they can, and so it's it's very nefarious. Um, a lot of this curriculum is coming in through the you know, through sex ed, uh, where it's not just you know objectionable. I mean, cartoon porn. I've seen some curricula have been approved in public schools and books that are very trashy and just gross, and it's things that kids have no business learning when they're you know under the age of ten. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I want to just say that I am frequently reached out to now by parents who, uh, for example, one of them called me and said that her daughter was taught at school that there is such a thing as cis, that's C-I-S, gender, which that's, that prefix is a, a word from the hard sciences, which roughly means same. And the concept is, is that if you're cisgender, you're a female who identifies as a female or a male who identifies as a male, that your sex and your gender match. But that's a lie. <laughs> your, your body is sexed. They're a male and female. And so this entire concept of gender is a set of stereotypes. And it's been, ex again, I'll just reiterate, it's been expressed in different ways throughout history. Post-industrial revolution versus pre, gender looked very different but it has nothing to do with reproductive biology. And so uh, children are just being, ha having their heads full of stuff that's just not objective reality. Um, 
what what parents can do. Um, I think that it. I mean, I. It, hmm. I'm not going to tell them whether or not they should withdraw their kids from public school or anything because each each family has to make that determination for themselves. But I would say to parents, tell your children the truth on a regular basis. You know, have, maybe have a very sobering conversation with them about, you know, there are some people with really ill motives that are doggedly determined to brainwash you into a particular view of things. I don't like it, but it is what it is, but we're your parents and we love you and we're going to tell you the truth and tell them the truth about their bodies and do so on a regular basis. Do so often because um, the the transgender movement, the gender identity activists have boundless energy and they are determined to convince children of complete lies. I'm not exaggerating any, exaggerating any of this. Um, it, this stuff is everywhere. Parents do need to understand um, that every day, virtually now, mm -hmm. uh, when they send their kids off to school, let alone, I mean, every kid virtually now has a phone. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, uh, a concerted effort yes. to yes. saturate our kids mm -hmm. with this message. Yes. This did not come yes. out of the blue. Right. This yeah. is, uh, one has to say, it's an agenda. If you have an objective, mm -hmm. you have an agenda if you're going to uh, move things toward the desired outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to uh, create a young person that is easy to manipulate, especially in terms of sexual boundaries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is you start little by little uh, going after their mind in terms of what gender is, what sexuality is. Right. And right. before you know it, they are very, very susceptible to somebody who's already watching them. Right. In one way or another, um, they're, they're already being selected and groomed. And it can happen. And Brandon, you hear the stories, I hear the stories of parents. Before they knew it, there was somebody in the background somewhere, oftentimes through school, it could be youth groups, though, now. Mm -hmm. It could be anywhere. Everywhere. It's just yeah. unfortunately not yeah. safe mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. somebody has targeted a young person, and little by little, right under the parent's nose, things are going on to where a child is little by little being affected and impacted, and their boundaries are being uh, groomed. They're being crossed. And what's really, really so awful is... Uh, and this is happening in certain places, and I've seen school policies where they're adjusting it such that if the child comes out as the opposite sex, the parents aren't notified. This this deliberate rupture of the parent-child relationship where if, you know, Johnny says he's a girl at school and wants to be called Jessica, his teachers are immediately ordered to comply. And... He will be called Jessica at school and his parents will not know about it. And, and the school is acting as this, you know, quote unquote, safe place for Jessica to live. Uh, and so the, it's just, I, I find that so, so reprehensible because the school is acting as though it knows better than these parents who, you know, <laughs> have loved and nurtured their child for their whole lives. I mean, that I just think that's one of the most awful aspects of this entire beast, because then the school can refer, uh, can then you know sort of help the student along towards other more drastic measures, perhaps to a gender clinician who would want to give him, you know, want hormones or socially transition him and put him on a medical pathway that's irreversible. And the parents would be mostly in the dark about it. Uh, it it's just, it's, it's, it really is that bad. I, I'm not, <laughs> I keep saying I'm not exaggerating because I'm really not. I mean, the stories I hear and read about are horrible. Parents need to be aware of the fact that right now a, a young person who ends up becoming pregnant can be taken to a Planned Parenthood clinic without the parents knowing about it. Well, that's been happening for years. That's right. But that's isn't it interesting, just recently, Planned Parenthood got rid of their president because mm -hmm. their president raised concerns about this shift within Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. into this trans medicine, yeah. which means yeah. if a child can be taken off campus for an abortion, 
to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guess what the plans are without parental knowledge and awareness? You know, you know well, and from what I've under, from what I, my understanding is that at present, this is probably changing. And that was what you mentioned there about the recent ouster of Leanna Wynn, the former president of Planned Parenthood. It was a BuzzFeed reporter cited, you know, two sources saying that she was not so keen on using the transgender lingo about pregnant people as opposed to the sex specific, you know, pregnant women, duh, obviously. <laughs> uh, but h how much of that was the reason for her firing? I don't know, but that was definitely part of it. But yes, you make a great point. It, it, to, as at present, what I understand about Planned Parenthood's foray into transgender medicalization is that you still have to be over 18 to get hormones from them. But I imagine that's probably changing because uh, people, you have to have, if you're over 18, you can get them. You have to have your parents' consent otherwise. But uh, I, I would put nothing past Planned Parenthood in trying to get itself more gender-confused clients so they can sell more drugs. I really wouldn't surprise me at all. But even if it's not Planned Parenthood, it'll someone else, I mean, <laughs> these kids will be referred to other entities where they will be groomed into continuing the delusion that they are the opposite sex. Well, Brandon, I want to thank you for uh, coming on and helping to educate us and parents. I would recommend a good place to start uh, for parents if they're suddenly awakening to this is your post on the Christian Post, uh, the articles that you've written. Uh, that would be a good overview, a good education. And from there, I would imagine um, they can either springboard into other um, uh, resources. Uh, I know oftentimes, uh, Brennan, you link to other resources as well. Uh, any other resources that you have uh, at the tip of your finger to help parents? Yes, I think uh, there are two articles that I'd like to recommend for parents. One is uh, by Madeline Kearns. She's a reporter. Uh, she is a brilliant, brilliant writer from Scotland. She writes for National Review. And the article that everyone needs to read is The Trans Child as Experimental Guinea Pig. Uh, it was a big feature story uh, written earlier this year. It just chronicles all of the major players, a lot of the major players who are at the helm of this push towards the medicalization of young bodies and the confusion is being sown into their, into their minds. Uh, I would also recommend, I recommend this article to everyone. I did so on a previous podcast and I'll do so again here. It's in the federalist called who are the rich white men institutionalizing transgender ideology by Jennifer Bielek. And that will give uh, parents and anyone interested of, a, a, a glimpse into the money streams. It will show who you, who in the pharmaceutical and medical device industries, the, some of the major actors who run, you know, gay rights foundations, who stands to profit handsomely off of this horrifically obscene abuse of children. Uh, so that's uh, those two articles will get people started. <laughs> I, I appreciate your promoting of my own work. Um, I never could have imagined doing any of this, but uh, it's just kind of one of those things where once I learned what was happening, I just couldn't look away. Well, Brandon, you're a good man. I appreciate it. And uh, blessings to you. Continue to do the good work you're doing. And uh, maybe in the future, we'll connect again and you can give us an update on uh, some more of uh, the insights you've gained from this nefarious movement. Thank you, John. I really appreciate it. You've been listening to Predator Watch, dedicated to shining the light of truth about the nature of the most sophisticated of sexual predators most likely to target places where victims are most easily accessed. For John Euler and the entire team, thanks for listening. Predator Watch has been sponsored by SurvivorSupport.net. As a nonprofit organization, Survivor Support is dependent upon the generosity of people who believe in its mission of supporting survivors please consider becoming a monthly supporter of this important work.